All right, guys, welcome back to part two of our New Year's episode on our favorite cards from the year. Let's jump right back into it, and thanks so much for listening. Can I open Jumpstart, please? Uh, yes, but no. before we before we even get onto it, that's by the way, that just is Hope talking about cards upstairs. She just loves Jumpstart. I love Jumpstart so much. Um, we we do still have four sets going, so we are probably going to split this one into two, and I'll probably release the second one like Monday afternoon or something. Sweet. So I just want yeah, everyone we'll to know in advance. Two split. Yeah, but um, Hope, go ahead, talk to us about your set. So um, before before you're we not go, Hope, Brian. Before... You're not Hope, Brian. No, no. Before we go into Jumpstart. May we do a small prayer for the tiniest of leaders? Oh. And oh, oh. And right. we are done. What? Hope you can continue. What? I don't know Sorry. anything that just happened there, Brian, but uh, <laughs> I'm happy for you. Um, you know what? He's doing just fine. So, Jumpstart is uh, my set. It is the set that I love. It is the set that I love the most. It is my favorite set in Magic so far. I love Jumpstart on a level that I cannot describe. If you want to hear about how much I love Jumpstart, go listen to our Jumpstart episodes. If you want to hear more about how much I love Jumpstart, I'll do another Jumpstart episode. I love it. I love it so much. I will literally buy a box of Jumpstart and just play the whole thing and just against I, herself <laughs> no i play it at work so number um, one hope hopes hope intro to her jumpstart stuff i'm going to say this amazing reprints none of these are good enough to be considered reprints because of their allocation they flat out just fair. aren't really good like yeah like i don't think like the rhystic study reprint was meaningful yeah the same as like uh crater hoof behemoth for yeah, instance that not was not meaningful. a meaningful oracle reprint. of Moldiah, yes. not meaningful um so that aside um there are a couple things that I want to touch on. One, the Phyrexian Swamp is the dopest thing I've ever seen in my life. That is pretty dope. Uh, two, yes. the Thriving Lands are the best lands at their price point for, for fixing? mana fixing. They're ridiculous. They're like 50 cents. They're free. They are solid cards. They're so good. A very good budget so option. So good. <laughs> and um, Ooh, talking about them as well. A really fun thing about them is they can give you access to... Uh, I really like to play Send Triplets, for instance, where I can play things from other people's decks and I need to generate mana of a different color. Mm -hmm. They're in your commander color identity but give you access to things outside of it if for some reason you need it. Yep. So there's nothing saying that it has to be within... Yeah, you can be like you can be playing a mono green deck and be like, screw it, I want access to black. Yeah, whatever. if it's the red one, it just has to be in your commander identity and you're red good to pick and, whatever you want. Yeah. Um and and I would say that like one card, if it had been more accessible, if there had been more of them, and if it wasn't hundred and twenty buckaroos, Alisaur Shepherd would have been format altering. No, oh, it's I believe it's the strongest card in the set. It is by far the strongest card I in the set. I actually think that it is in probably the top five strongest cards in the last five years. It is ridiculous. I would agree. But it's real good. It is so inaccessible that it is has not really <laughs> yeah. I don't think it's I don't think it caused the splash that it could have and should have caused had it been more accessible. Had coronavirus not been as big an issue and like had this not happened <laughs> like and had uh jumpstart been printed more and had there not been hiccups and had this you know like i think things would have been could have been different i will flat out say even if covid hadn't happened the, there just wasn't enough printing they all these sets keep being yeah. I keep it's I, printed I, demand exactly but it's not i repeat this point to everyone everyone's like oh it's printed demand and stuff i'm like okay yes but you're underestimating the demand for these cards we're all animals yeah the problem too is it it wasn't designed for us. No, no. It, it was. It was. You guys are wrong. No, 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 no. Hold on, hold on. It, it in the fact that they say it's print demand. The problem is, is this is for the hope and Dan show up and are waiting for people to show up, buy two packs and play. It's kind of more designed for the casuals, but not not Daniel. Up. Daniel refuses. Daniel no. will not play Jumpstart. It was an analogy. Let me tell you right now. The, nothing has tilted me more in my entire life than seeing people buy boxes of jumps or just a crack. I hope made me play at least one game when I got my box. Well, it's, it's, it's honestly it's so it's fun. A, it's a bad investment. Like, it, yes, you know what the good the good investment is the playing of it, and then yeah. any cards that you get out of it yeah. that are good are a bonus. But the the problem is, how much is a box of this stuff in most books? Uh, it depends. Yeah. It was anywhere what between just... one fifty and two fifty. Okay, so let's say it's $200 to buy a box. Yeah. You will not make back $200. Yeah. 
You Nobody's you won't guarantee you're not guaranteed to come close to that. Crocodilosaurus shepherd, and you will. I'm like you can not, you unless, can unless you can or me. You I've I've cracked three Allosaurus shepherds, tiny boneses, muxes, mm-hmm. I've everything. Um, but can I can you open my box of. <laughs> no, but uh, but uh, like you can make that money back on two cards. Like if you just get an Allosaurus shepherd and Brewback. Yeah, my, but it's pretty. But pretty it's up. not my my big gripe with the set, no foils. I don't care. Number one, a lot of people don't like the foils. That's fair. Me, the foils are curled and stuff like that. It's the best uh, set. Ghoul color Gissa, love it beyond belief, and it's never been printed in foil. And I was so excited. And then they're just like, get wrecked. We're not putting it in foil. Suck it. You will never have this. We're in foil. wizards of the coast. Learn to like it. Yeah. We're not yeah. wizards of the convenience. Yeah, I, like I didn't even know that they printed Kira the Gla- Great Glass Spinner again. They sure yeah, did. I, I didn't even see one. I never even saw one with the with the Jumpstart logo on it. Never. Mm-hmm. Not oh, much. I have. I have. I definitely mm-hmm. have. So, number one, I want to get into just some of the... I, I'm going to call them Jumpstart Commanders. That's what they're for. Yeah. They're Jumpstart Commanders. They're all super good, I think. I'm going to start Bruvac. Bruvac slaps. He's just crazy I good. One hundred percent agree. He is very strong. He's an advisor. Do you want to play blue. your deck? Yeah, that's crazy. Two and a blue for a one four, which is a big body for a two three and or for a three mana and blue. If an opponent would mill one or more cards, they mill twice that many instead, and that is insane. Mm-hmm. Yep. Crazy. Please mill ten during your turn. Oh, please mill twenty at the end. Oh yeah, it's uh. There. Bruvac is one of the fastest mill deck. It, it's the first thing that I've seen that has made Mill viable. Like, what are they going to do next? In Make a burn? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I hope so. Oh, double the burn damage at the end of turn. Burn Mander? I triple. would lose my freaking mind. Triple or what, what would it be? Source. Tri- triple any red damage that would be dealt to target player at the end of turn? If you, oh. if you, made, if you made double red damage, you would have a burn commander. Lightning Bolt would for six mana? Uh, would you mind if I read off two I would. commanders? No, go ahead. You would. <laughs> uh, so so one, that's, one that's very special to my heart um, because it came from Canada with love because I could not get my hands oh. on this and I really wanted to build it was Inaz the Gale Force. This is when we first I, became friends. It was. Hope and Dan were nice enough to send me an Inaz the Gale Force and I built my Bad Santa deck and it's just it's so much fun, but... Uh, Inaz is three blue blue for a legendary creature, Jin four four, flying two Nazorius or two hybrid white blue. Attacking creatures with flying get plus one plus one until end of turn. Whenever one or more creatures you control with flying attack, each player gains control of a non land permit of your choice controlled by the player to the right. Very cool card. It's so cool. It was so unique. Um, this is just like I. This is what I want Wizards to keep doing. If they did jumpstart to electric boogaloo. Oh I would my be god. All you know they will. They will. Uh, yeah. Um, so that was one card I was super, super excited about because it was out of my wheelhouse as far as like colors I, you know, brew with on their own. And this other card uh, was one of the first decks that I think I actually played on our channel, and that's Zerzoth Chaos Rider. Hell yeah, I buddy. Have, I have this deck still built behind me. I haven't played it in a while, uh, but it's two and a red for a legendary creature, Devil, 2-3. Whenever an opponent draws their first card each turn, if it's not their turn, you create a 1-1 one, one red Devil t- creature token with, when this creature dies, it does one damage to any target. Whenever one or more Devils you control attack one or more players, you and those players each draw a card, then discard a card at random. This deck is so much fun. It is so aggressive. It rebuilds so quickly. And you get so much card advantage. It's the stuff that you like seeing with goblins without the same goblin trope. It's just, God, I love playing this deck. Um, yeah, those are my two cards that, like, I was so hoping I opened a Zerzoth, a K- or, sorry, Zerzoth, Bruvac, and Inaz, and I was lucky enough to open Zerzoth and Bruvac, and my good friends sent me the other. It, the set was just cool. This was just two unique cards that just did it for me outside of my wheelhouse. Big vibes. Honestly, yeah, like all of the... Emil is a very cool one. I uh, I just I got that one for Hope. It's uh, Finally, I'm so excited. Unicorn, two white, oh, white. Oh, you actually got one? Yep. Yeah. Uh, it's a legendary Yay. unicorn, a 4-4 four, four for four. For three, exile yeah. another target creature you control, then return it to the battlefield under its owner's control. Whenever another creature enters, you may pay one either green or white. Uh, if you do put a one on counter on it, uh, <laughs> if it's a unicorn, put two instead. 
It's just a really cool Blink commander. Blink is very, very fun for a lot of people. Uh, counters in Selesnya are also very popular. Like, I, I thought it was a really, really cool commander of it. Uh, you just saw so many good ones. Obviously, I love Tiny Bones. Our Lord and Savior. <laughs> Our Lord and Savior, Tiny, Tiny Bones. Tiny Bones, the replacement for Erebos. Yes. The Lord, think- of, Lord of my heart. I've never seen a Tiny Bones deck played until I played, excuse me, played against yours, Dan. And man, it is just insane. This, especially with your card selection so that fun. you have access to. Yeah. Like, I, I've also never seen a Chains of Metastopheles, like, yeah. in person. Well, I guess not in person, but in but a game. same vibe. Until, yeah, until I played against your Tiny Bones deck. And A, that was so cool because, once again, like, seeing cards like that, amazing. But, yeah, the stuff you can do with so many of these Jumpstart Commanders... They they did good for us. They really did. Yeah. How are you saying that, Ryan? Oh, I said just chains. What does that do? Oh. It's just the wording on it is so bizarre. Oh, it's, it actually does. Yeah. It's it's cancer. It's somebody somebody come at me with an errata, please. Uh, Kel's fight fixer was another very cool jumpstart one. Very cool. And I believe you built that as well, right, Zach? I did. It was a uh, zombies aristocrat deck and Demir and man. That deck was dumb. <laughs> that's that's the first deck Zach beat me with ever. Nice. Yes, I was so proud because like Dan just like cleaned the floor with me or well with us as a group. I don't know how many weeks in a row and finally like Kels, Gray Merchant, everyone fixed to death. the fights. Like, oh, it did fix the fight. I um, said okay. <laughs> another one that I just cannot wait to build is Nath of the Dire Hunt. Ooh, That's yeah. such mm-hmm. a cool card. Yeah, the artwork, awesome. yeah, the artwork straight out. I just was in love with the art of it. Like the. Jumpstart brought us a lot of really, really good new cards, and like mm-hmm. we said, like quote unquote reprints. But like I, out of I would say the strongest ones were the Jumpmanders. Yeah, yeah. Muxus is insane. Muxus is very cool. Uh, Naeth, for anyone who doesn't know, it's whenever one or more creatures you control fight or become blocked, draw a card, which is also just silly. The fact that like blocking gets huge card draw is nuts. You're green. It's what you do. You swing. Uh, at the beginning of combat on your turn, you can pay two and either red or green. If you do double target creature's power until the end of the turn, that creature must be blocked as combat fable. Does that card exist anywhere outside of Jumpstart? Nope. No. Uh-uh. It is the Jumpmander, and it's another one. All, every one of the Jumpstart commanders uh, is still pricey. I, I don't think any of the Jumpstart exclusive ones are cheap, with the exception of maybe Zerzov and, like, Ineas. Uh, Zerzov, uh, Ineas, I, I, Kels, and aren't too bad. Is Kels cheap, oh, I thought? Yeah, it's like $12. Yeah, that's not really oh, like, cheap for a, a, a pretty generic. for a legendary creature. Yeah, twelve is twelve is pretty high. That's not really mega budget. I, I don't know a unique legendary creature. I don't think is think all the commanders I've cool. built. I'm just <laughs> saying that it's not really a foil. Like I traded for I think Bruvac with Dante, and I think we came to seventy five dollars trade. Well, yeah, I, I guess when you look at it compared like, to Bruvac, Bruvac is... and... yeah, Bruvac. Could you and... imagine though, with with this set's availability, if they would have had, if they would have made foils, what the foils would go for? Oh, it would have been uh, disgusting. Break the bank. Yeah, I guess this one's only six bucks American, Nath. Yeah, they're like not bad. Okay. Yeah, not a, foil, a foil tiny bones or a foil Allosaur Shepherd. No, a oh, foil Allosaur Shepherd would be like four hundred dollars, dude. Probably. Like no Pretty question. More. Yeah, yeah two fifty for a foil tiny bones. <laughs> I would not. <laughs> you couldn't. Pay Yo, the me. fact that they reprinted Isamaru Hound of Conda as a legendary disrespectful. Big, dis- <laughs> big disrespect, man. Disrespectful to us as players. Mm-hmm. You there was, you'll still pay for it. That was one of my big issues with this is these packs had either so much value or so little value. And there was like some like that. Oh, the only rare in this, like uh, for anyone who's never cracked jumpstart, they're all in sealed packs that are a theme and you can only get one X rares. 40. Yeah. In the themes, like you can only get crater hoof in the elves theme. Yes. So certain themes are more rare, but then some of the themes just have Gaunty. That's it. That's your rare. Get wrecked. Yeah. Yeah, I, I, I have six, so many Gaunties. Enjoy your 20 cent rare. I opened six packs of Jumpstart, and I don't think my combined value between all six packs for more than a single pack cost me. Oh, don't get me wrong. There was some nuts cards. Like, even Blessed Sanctuary is a very, very cool card. That's three yeah. white, white. Prevent all non-combat damage to be dealt to you and creatures you control. So super good for Fire Song and Sunspeaker. And whenever a non-token enters the battlefield under control, create a 2-2 white unicorn. It's ETB, it's protection, it's so good. Blasphemous act me now. 
Zach's favorite magic card with Brass Tonner. Yeah, as long as I got Brass Tonner out, I don't care. <clears throat> yeah, then you're good. Or, uh, or Stormwood, or Stormwild Courier, or Cor- Carpador, or whatever. The Bird Goat. Love that guy. <laughs> Bird Goat. Uh, I opened I opened four packs the other day and um I opened this as a mythic and I was I didn't even realize it was in the set but it's towering titan yeah uh, four green green for a giant it's zero zero when towering titan yeah. enters the battlefield or sorry towering titan is a battlefield with x plus one plus one counters on it where x is the total toughness of other creatures you control mm-hmm. you can sack creature with defender all creatures gain trample until end of turn like I didn't even realize this card was in the set and it's now in my scavengers deck because of what it does and the, you know, being able to recur and all that. But there's just, it sucks. Like you guys, you know, like we've talked about the availability on these being near impossible to get. And there's just so many good cards. There's so many cool things and it makes the feel bads, you know, feel really worse. Yeah. Uh, I yeah, personally you, thought the towering Titan should have been like more into the legendary creature. Like it could have had mm-hmm. its own cool space for it. Also yeah. real talk. Um, what one? You can do it. I'll play with faith in you. Could you imagine if Tyrant Titan would have been uh, green and then had an activated ability for the Saka creature? Mm-hmm. I remember what I was going to say now that my brain rebooted. I was just going to say with, reg- <laughs> <laughs> with regards to the field bats, I cannot tell you how many speakers of the heavens I have. Oh, terrible card. Every <laughs> single time I open a ding dang doctor pack. I swear to God, it is so frustrating. At least give me the Rock's Faith Mender, for God's sakes. So annoying. <laughs> um, that's, how I f- that's how I feel about Smashing. I can't tell you how many Volcanic oh, solos I've opened. Oh, smashing a Legion? Honey. I, I honestly believe that uh, Branching Evolution takes the strongest card in this set. That's my favorite card. That or Alasaurus oh, Shepherd. I forgot about that card. Branching Evolution is my favorite one. Branching is so yeah. It's wonderful artwork. It's mini doubling season. If one or more 1-1 one, one counters will be put on a creature you control, twice that many counters are put on it instead. That's really, really, really good, and that is not available enough. Like I said, I, I cannot explain how these cards all already need a reprint, and they were what well, and months ago. Yeah, well, that's like my favorite yeah. thing about Branching Evolution is whenever we have one in the store, everyone's like, "Oh, what does it do?" And I'm just like, "It's Jumpstart Doubling Season." I'm like, and they're like, "Excuse me," and I'm like, "Hell yeah, this is the best." Uh, hitting like getting a Silvala, getting a shoulder, like you definitely had some really, really good. My cards favorite to thing pick about up. getting the shoulder is that it meant that I got the swamp. Yeah. I don't care so, about the shoulder. So <laughs> the one the one card that I didn't actually realize that they reprinted in Jumpstart was Black Market. Yep, Black Market's a great reprint. It's very yeah. good. So uh, good yeah, I didn't I didn't. Is someone that shaking dice or there. shuffling something? Yeah. <laughs> hand check <laughs> if, if someone is doing it please stop eating corn nuts <laughs> <laughs> but yeah like like a lot of these like cards i'm very like yes they need um a reprint like the ones that are jumpstart specific just like the free spells from icoria or the commander 20 decks but because like you need to have them in just a regular standard set but the, i'm really happy that a lot of them got reprinted my probably i would say my most powerful card for this set would probably be Bruvac because a i love mill and b i love mill <laughs> uh you guys your favorite thoughts hope hope's taking a second uh you guys do you have a favorite card of the set also, Maelstrom I, Archangel should be legendary. I'm just going to say it. Yes, I would agree. I would probably say Alasar Shepard. Being that we're, we've ventured into the tiny leader's world, and I decided to play elves, that card <laughs> is berserk. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, it's one Bazaar. green, and, and, and green spells can't be countered, it, right? it. I think it yeah, also... It, it turns everything into 5-5 five, five dinosaur elves. Dinosaur. Mm-hmm. It's a real good mana sink. It yeah. rules. Um... Uh, my favorite is Branch Revolution. I already said. Love it. Yeah. One one counter queen. What more do I have to tell you? Zach? I also really like, oh, sorry. I also really like Emil. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I'd say the most powerful card, definitely Branching Evolution. I was super excited to open that. And my favorite card is somewhere between um, Zerzoth and Inaz. Like I said, Zerzoth, I was super hyped to open that. It's my first mono red deck. And then you guys, like, 
getting Enaz was just it meant so much to me. Aww. Like I couldn't couldn't get access to it. No one had it. You guys were nice enough to send it to me, and it just You're made welcome. me feel. And we like it just made me feel special. You we know? like didn't like, even know you. Also, it's just like you know what he seems fine. He seems like a nice guy. That's how we lured him in. Yeah, we sucked <laughs> <That's> him <laughs> in. Well, it didn't cost saying, you anything like, except for every Saturday of your life until you die. <laughs> Look, outside of spending time with my family, it's gonna say your son you gets got, married. Yeah. <laughs> Not on a Saturday. Saturday. <laughs> but like seriously though, like uh, Jumpstart was a very like the set itself was good, but as being as you know sappy as I am, like it meant a lot more because I got to share it with you guys. You know? Aww. Aww. There's out there, Inez. You can take him whichever. Did we not mention our Lord and Savior? Tiny Bones? We, we talked did. about Tiny Bones. We talked about Tiny okay. Bones. Brian, you're just on the sauce. Know. We're not going to spend too much time on the next set, Double Masters. It's all reprints. Um, Hold on. Yeah, no, thank you. Oh, oh, what, one sec, one sec, Ryan. Go ahead. I was going to say, we have to talk about one card. Okay. Toxic, toxic Deluge. I'm oh. done. <laughs> Is that in this one or was that That's Double Masters? That's in Double Masters. It's, it's Double Masters. Yeah, we haven't even started Double Masters. I'm just saying, we're just going to quickly talk about some of the things in Double Masters. So, number one, yeah. before we even start into it, the value in Double Masters is nuts. I'm looking at the estimated value of the set. It's $2,355. So, there was yeah. there was value in it. Number one, I didn't really buy a lot of Double Masters. I didn't buy any Double Masters. That's true. Um, the whole reason, yeah. Well, none that's is, not none a is lot. Not. Yeah. So, if you had a very large collection... Double Masters really wasn't for you. Like it's, it had very cool things in it. Uh, it's not even about size. I would say if you have like a, a valuable collection. Yes. Okay. So that being said, this was the set that made it the most accessible I have ever seen for people to get into Commander and to build up high value cards. No yeah. one, no one in a casual mid tier, like that just likes to play magic with their friends is generally going out and buying Force of Wills. They reprinted Force of Will, Mana Crypt, and all the sorts. Yep. Well, exactly. The fact that they brought a, the price on a Traxa down and gave us a cool new artwork on it. Uh, and just, Jace the Mind Sculptor. Oh. Like, there's just, like, high-end Stone. cards printed everywhere. Stoneforge like, Mystic. Chrome Mox oh. doubling season. You want high-end cards? Oh. You got it. The thing that made me, and this is, this is my... My pick for the set. The thing that made me so happy was Dark Confidant. I've wanted a Dark Confidant for so long, but I just argued with myself on the price because I was just like, I, I just can't, can't justify, justify it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can't because justify the high cost for some of these cards. Uh, before this, Blade Steel Colossus was ninety five dollars. Yeah, yeah, that was my favorite, my absolute favorite thing. I couldn't. I was in a financial situation where I could not afford, and I didn't think it was reasonable to buy boxes of Double Masters. I just couldn't. But my cousin, on the other hand, went ham and. I got so many cards because like the price dropped insane. Yeah. And yeah. and the box toppers, like the two box toppers we could get, Court of Calling and Wrath of, or not oh, Rath. The buy boxes. Oh yeah. Honey, Just, stop. Sorry. With that. What? 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 That was the box yeah, toppers, Brian. Not box toppers, so buy boxes. Buy box, sorry. Yeah. yeah it I was, didn't even know about this. And it was, I was with, not aware. And it was with new art. I think mm-hmm. I have it yeah. over here. You double masters, you get double the bio boxes. You got a quarter colony, you got a wrath of god. Mm-hmm. The wrath of god's real go, cool. I, this is the, I didn't get any of this. Wasn't this was the quarter colony. Promo for that, this set too? What was that? Wasn't there a third promo for this set? Uh, nope. The, you That's got, what I'm aware of. Yeah, you, so you got the two bio box and then you got two box toppers. Yeah. Yeah, I just for some reason I thought there was another bio box promo for this no. set. Um, but another thing I'm. Another thing that made this set super like insane was a lot of downshifts for rarity. Mm-hmm. Like that, that made things once again so much more accessible, and that's what we want to see. Like as commander players, I want everyone to have access to literally everything under the sun. And yeah, that exactly. Means taking, if that means taking Oriok Salvengers and moving it down from a rare to an uncommon, please do that forever. Like where it's reasonable, obviously. But like, I don't even think I know that card. Uh, it, uh, it's, it's a cool it's a, card. It's, it's a it's, it's, combo one, yeah. It's uh, you can pay two mana and bring an artifact from your graveyard back to play, Here's or is it player to hand? What? It's to, uh, to hand. It's no, to, it's to hand from graveyard to your yeah. hand. Yeah. I thought, I thought. So it's it's part of what's called the bomberman combo, where you do this and lion eye diamond. Hmm. You definitely just... do. You <laughs> definitely do. <laughs> I'm pretty sure you. I'm pretty sure you bomberman does. I... Oh, Ubi let. Definitely, definitely did. <laughs> Doesn't sound like me. <laughs> I haven't heard Oobie. that name in years. 
Ubilet being reprinted finally was insane. Yep. Phasing. Uh, so cool. They they brought, like I said, I, I didn't get a super into this, but uh, short of Moldrotha, they, they printed some of the strongest and most popular commanders in this set. Kalia coming back was, like, Kalia was a pricey card again. So was Atraxa. Like, Atraxa was, what, $60, $70? Because everyone Reese. wants to super, yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly. Risk the Redeemed. Uh, mm-hmm. Send Triplets again. <laughs> Riku was another very oh, very cool Riku one. Riku was so dope. Mm-hmm. The fact well, that so they the, fa- the fact that they didn't give Riku his own alternate artwork crime criminal. Yeah, that is a crime. Criminal. Uh, Karthus, I didn't know this either, but Karthus Tyrant of Jun was also an expensive card before this set. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because it was not around. I'm- Yep, uh, Maz- uh, Maserick also was only mm-hmm. printed in, a, in two commander sets, and one was like a commander anthology, I believe. It was expensive; like it was in the teens or twenties before this reprint. Like another another great value reprint was Imperial Recruiter. Mm-hmm. Yes, that was nowhere. 100%. Yeah, that was very surprised. Uh, Geist was another cool one. Then you had Dark Steel Forge. Like you had just a ton of super high value. Let's not forget. Mr. Freeze himself. I was, gonna, I was just about to say they murdered the artwork of Karn. That was, <laughs> I don't know. Like it's, I feel bad. Like it's, I, I first off, let me let me get this out of the blue. I can barely print my name legibly. Yeah. And I am certain I could draw Karn better than this. I am certain you couldn't. I, <laughs> I'm willing to try. He I don't know what. So the, doofy. The best meme card. Best meme card 2020. Don't at me. Um, but I really liked it. I <laughs> love having all the Urza lands, also like the Tron lands. Get out of my house. This I was, was so stoked about that. This was the set that brought down the price the most out of any set I've seen. Uh, it made a lot of things that just were not accessible accessible to new players. And if you were getting into Commander at the time, you were able to just get so much value out of these boxes. Like I didn't see any boxes that were busts and I saw a lot of boxes opened. I I remember I cracked a box and my value before the box topper, the value of my box, I was losing about fit by about 50 bucks. Then I opened up a force of will and it was like doubled my value. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite things to see reprinted too was the filter lands. I used to always want to run these lands, but I just, once again, I could not justify the price. Right. And boom, here they are. And I don't know how much they've went up since, but I bought all the Esper ones, I don't know, a month ago, and they were mm-hmm. six bucks each. I was going to say. Sunken Ruins, in, I think, yeah, I think Sunken Ruins might have been 10 US. Yeah. In, in Moose Money, there no none of them are more than $10 right now. Well, uh, you I also hit the uh, Lightning Greaves and stuff. and Oh. Uh, what, Path? Not Swords, but Path. Mm-hmm. That was a, that's a big thing. And Pongify, like. Yep. I have to say the 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 cyclonic rift reprint with the alt art. Oh, and let's also no. let's also talk about those collector boosters with the full art lands. Those a lot of people went nuts over how nice some of those full art basics were. Yeah, they were beautiful. Like there was there was a lot of really really cool things you got in this. Uh, you didn't need to you didn't need to buy the collectors, but there was something for like I said, if you had a big collection, this wasn't really or a valuable collection. This wasn't super for you. Like I have. I've got play sets of lots of the swords and stuff. I'm not super interested in cracking swords, but you flex this sort of feast and famine like box topper at me, oh, and you sword have sort of fire and ice. You box have my up. attention. Holy moly! Yeah, fire and <laughs> ice was insane looking. Oh. Uh, mana echoes, land tax like this. This set was just I chock full of value. Land tax. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah. Ex- exploration and oh, exploration and doubling season. And their yeah. alternate arts were just oh. Oh, buddy, don't get me started on the doubling, the double, the double <laughs> season art. Oh, I love my baby twin dinos. Give me that know. art all day long. My favorite thing all the time is seeing how many of us have that play mat. I, I really love it. Like, whoa, I whoa, my, whoa, hope. My Excuse me. Does not get those play mats. I really love the council judgments. Um, I know you guys hate it, but I really like the alt art. I love it. Oh, I, I think it looks dope. I bought I just, one last week. I thought you guys didn't like it as like your box topper. Oh. Yeah, because it has no value. So it's just oh, a feel I, bad. I was one of those guys that was like, man, whatever I got, whatever I got. I'm just excited. Oh, like, yeah. I didn't, I didn't. Storm or honey, I didn't buy any boxes of double masters. So like, I didn't care about it. I just mean like in general, like uh, if you get a $10 box <laughs> topper versus a $300 box topper, it's kind of a feel bad. Yep. I, okay. I, I guess all. my, like how I looked at it was like, um, if my box topper is worth less than some of my rares, it's annoying. 
Um, I was going to say, I, a lot of my friends I open boxes with end up opening these packs were insane. Yes. So to see some of these, like, I get it. But when you open, like, an Atraxa, a uh, Fire and Ice, and a, a Mana Drain, and then you get, like, a crop rotation, can you really be upset? Uh, well, yeah. Um, I got the yeah. crop rotation. I love the crop rotation, and, by the way. I yeah. think it's so dope. I adore it. The reflection cycle reprint, amazing. Yeah. Mana reflection, mm -hmm. boon reflection, wound, etc. They were so good, so welcome. Uh, I, uh, yes. I was talking before about how Jumpstart, there was a lot of feel-bad packs. Your packs sucked or they were really good, and there was pretty much no in-between. There wasn't very many. It's okay, right? To the point where in Jumpstart, where you see some of the themes, you're just like, oh, oh right. it feels bad, right? Whereas with Double Master, it's like With this, opposite. yeah, two rares in a pack and stuff, you you didn't have many feel-bad packs. They, minimum oh. of two rares. Minimum of two, two rares, yes. Oh, yeah, you Same could also get yourself. the foil. Yeah, like there, there was a, just a ton of a ton of potential, and I think Double Masters is some of the happiest I've seen people opening. Happiest I've seen is Commander Legends. People love that. Yeah. We're gonna get to that. Commander Legends is bonkers. My oh, yeah. only, my only complaint about this entire set: Swift Blade Vindicator should not should not been in the set as a rare or Gross. something. Gross. That that was my feel bad. Like when I did have the money to buy packs, and I did crack it, and it was a Swift Blade. I was just upset that's my only complaint yeah since these are all reprints i don't think we need to touch on what's the strongest of them like it's there's something for everyone in here this yeah, was like the only set classes. that i that i fell down a rabbit hole of opening collector books <laughs> it's the only set that's ever like i it's fair i think uh, when uh, was it was it this uh, this set the first one that we started opening with ogres ah uh, no we, I think I we've been cracking for ages like i was cracking back in pharaoh's buddy yeah, like po like opening up these and like you were super stoked. Like, yeah, uh, they were they were very fun. Now let's get yeah. into nonsense set. Zendikar Rising. Zendikar Rising. How is it nonsense set? Man, because this set is so good. So number one, this so, is going to be a very very hard set to say what the best is because it introduced okay. such a unique mechanic of the flip lands. The modal land cards are so cool. The pathways are so cool. Like they're, but just the mythic versions of the lands, the new bolt land styles, they just bring so much to the deck. An answer where you have a tap land at worst and a spell at best is a really, really game changing, like mechanic. It yeah. also has objectively uh, my favorite common of the entire year, Zach knows. <laughs> well, tell us what it is. It's Feed the Swarm. It is Feed the Swarm. Yeah, it's amazing. Right? I'm, I'm going to go, I'm gonna go so, out there and just put this out there before we even start. Agadim's Awakening is the best card in the set. Prove me wrong. Uh, I'm not as big of a fan on it, but it is a good card. So there's Zendikar. There's Feed the Swarm as my top card. Same. Agadim's Awakening is Agadim's Awakening is definitely up there, but Feed the Swarm is just so much more needed. I was gonna say my second favorite card in this entire set because Feed the Swarm is the best, but my second favorite is like far and above Lith Form Engine. Mm. Mm -hmm. The card's cool. The thing oh. that I struggled, the only thing that I struggled with with the lithoform was I was like, this can go in anything. What should I put it in? And that yeah. was my issue. I was like, I can put it literally anywhere and it will just make my deck better. Mm -hmm. I, actually, I have one and, I, I, it, it, and it's not even in any of my decks. I, I think the card's amazing, but I don't know what to do with it. I put it mine in Narset. I mean, that seems bonkers in our set. Double trigger, that, double spells if you need it. There's the one card that I think that we came up with a better name for. Yeah, Land Harmonicon. We. Yeah, yeah. I think it is yeah, Hope Land Harmonicon. It was. Ancient Green Warden, which I need so many of and you can't find. Again, yeah. Commander Players are Animal. Yeah, Brian just picked me up some because Brian's a savior. He's a good player. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, it is a 5-7 with reach for 6 mana. Great stats on an elemental body. You can play lands from your graveyard. That would be good enough to play. I would run it just for that. If a land entering the battlefield causes a triggered ability of a permanent you control to trigger, triggers an additional time. Well, that's uh, interesting. Interesting card, to say the least. For I was four and two green. I was probably the most excited about that. On its spoiling, I'm still probably the most excited about that in the set. There's uh, just a ton of great cards in the set, but that one, to me, takes the cake as one of the strongest cards printed. I buy every Panharmonicon I see. And I will also buy every land harmonicon I see because I just really like landfall. Same I may have mentioned it. One that I think is also like uh, one that is should be a commander staple, but people don't play enough. I think is um, Skyclave Relic. That is a very good. That's card. the kicker. Yeah. Uh, Dark Steel Ingot. Yeah. Three. Mm -hmm. At worst, it's a three mana, like you said. It's Dark Steel Ingot. Yeah. At worst. And at best, it is three Dark Steel Ingots. That can also block. <laughs> what do you mean they can they block? Are... They're creatures. No, they're not. No. Am I crazy? Yes. No, they're just 
They're just tokens. What's up, guys? Uh, I'm on oh. drugs. If they oh, were, that would be nuts. Reset the brain. Psych. Please share. Hmm. <laughs> um. Here's the thing. It's here's the thing, boys. I'm stupid. So <laughs> I want to get it. I, w- I want to go on a little bit because I really, really like this card too. Angel of Destiny. It's three white, white for oh, yeah. for just a very unique card. I really, really like it, and uh, I just think overall that's sorry. I, my brain is stopped because Hope's leaning on the microphone and won't stop for some reason. It's my pillow. Okay, don't, don't. <laughs> from a production standpoint, please don't. Um, if it's flying double strike two six. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, you and that player each gain that much life. So it's very cool. You can still kill people it? with it. It's an angel cleric, yes. There we go. Thank you. Brian just is very on the clerics. Uh, at the beginning of your mm. end step, if you have at least 15 more life than your starting life total, each player that attacked this game loses the game. Is really good. Really, really good. Super card. Neat. It's a very unique, different win con. It's very cool player removal because you don't have to actually kill them. You just have to swing at them, and it end step triggers is nuts. I, I just I, I can't say enough good things about that card. I think it was a really, really cool design. I love alternate win condition. I, uh, Another card. Go, go, ahead. go ahead, Ryan. Oh, I was going to say a card that I absolutely love, in love with. Every time it hits the battlefield, it goes off. Is Morog Fury of Akum. Oh, oh yeah. you beat me to it. Okay. He was on my list. Here. Go ahead, Brian. Go ahead, Brian. No, 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 no. You started this. You finish oh, I, it. I have him in my Lands Matters deck, and the card just goes off. I'm tired of getting my butt whooped by by Han with those cards. <laughs> he's he just also, killing us today. <laughs> yeah, he also, killed us again with it today. He's the only Minotaur that matters. That is entirely valid. No, I can I can agree with that. Minotaur is not a good tribal. It I needs mean, love. Sethron. Yeah, Sethron for what? Your other not good Minotaurs? Oh, the rude. command. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the rest are garbage. It's this guy and this guy only. Oh, you made me laugh for reasons I will not share. I know the reason, Brian, <laughs> and I stand by it. So I'll talk about another one of my favorite cards from the set. Uh, Do it, I dare you. Nighthawk, Nighthawk Scavenger. Goy Pock! Vampire Goy Pock. Yeah, what, again, what is, again, is again we... Scavenger? Again, we came up with a better name for this card than, than what they did. I remember getting, like, you guys let me explain this card. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I was just so excited. It's so good. Uh, Nighthawk Scavenger is one black black for a vampire rogue. It's one plus star three. <laughs> it has flying death touch lifelink. And Nighthawk Scavenger's power and toughness equal to one plus a number of card types among cards in your opponent's graveyard. Yeah, it's just it's <sighs> methamphetamine vampire nighthawk. And vampire nighthawk has been one of my favorite. Hey, did, so didn't long. methamphetamine crab come out in the same set? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Here's Head, the all thing. These Hedron uh, crab with a strict upgrade. We made mill good mm. by we gave you the ultimate mill commander, and now we're gonna give you a Hedron crab number two. Electric boogaloo. Electric boogaloo, and we're also oh, hey. yes. Sorry, I was gonna say we also gave uh, scoop mob. Scoot Swarm? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah boo, scoot. Boo, boo Scoot and Boogie. Scoot Swarm, for anyone who's not aware, is very, very good token creation. It is two and a green for a 1-1 insect. Whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, create a 1-1 green insect. If you control six or more lands, though, you create a token that's a copy of Scoot Swarm instead. And then they create copies of each other exponentially. It's disgusting. Yeah, they're bonkers. So, yeah, it's pretty Do ridiculous. Do you know what? I, I keep thinking of like the movie Evolution where they're looking through the magnifying glass and it's just like... Sure. It just keeps going. Can you do that again, Brian? Yeah. Can you do that again? Oh, yes. A reference everybody is familiar with. <laughs> oh. uh, okay, so so I take it you're not a movie buff like my, oh, I am. But okay, this is... a buff, you say. I'm sorry, I'm not as cultured as you are, Brian. <laughs> Don't Talking stop. about evolution. Uh, yeah. All movies. Omnoth was another card that came out in this set. Obviously, we keep talking about oh, Omnoth. The creation. In a, yeah, in the river, in the mountains. There's a lot of Omnoth. But... Omnoth. Yeah, locus of creation. So it is red, green, white, blue for an elemental 4-4. I blew this card off as like, I was like, eh, it's okay, but it's not that great. I was wrong. It is that great. You should make an Omnoth deck. It's super fun. It's awesome. Super fun. So number one, when it enters, you draw a card. That's already pretty cool. Uh, Landfall. Whenever it enters the battlefield under your control, you gain four life if it's the first time it's resolved. 
If it's the second time it's resolved, it is you get his colors in mana, so a red, green, white, blue. And if it's a third time, four damage to each planeswalker, each opponent, you, uh, each opponent, each planeswalker you don't control. No one cares about that ability. It's okay if someone's playing super friends like Hope. Hope's an animal. And the four life gain on a landfall is really good, but it's that second ability that is just the sweetest, sweetest candy in the world. You four sit, mana for yeah. free? Well, four mana for you evolving mm-hmm. wilds, and then you tempt with discovery with free mana? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's really, really good. It just the, I, I know it sounds silly to say out loud, but just the ramp implications of four free mana is real strong. Yeah. I would four love three, four, four free, free mana colored every mana. Turn. Yeah. So yeah, that's true. that. That's really true too. Four free yeah. colors. Yeah, four mana. free colorless mana is like not that good. Wait. So I. What do you mean not that good? That would still be sweet. It would be. It would be okay, but it wouldn't be as good as four. This of rules. The colors. Yeah. Um, another card that's like. Oh, sorry. Do you, do you have more to say about Amnam? I have definitely more to say about Amnam. Amnam. Yeah. Amnoth was banned in standard for just entirely ruining standard. Again, they are not built. They are not making these sets for <laughs> commander. <laughs> they have set that they format are, on a fire. Yeah. Yeah, no, they are not making it for standard. They you are... said for commander. Oh, for commander, yeah. yes, they are. <laughs> I'm like, uh. Well, I was wrong. They're definitely making it for commander. They have. Are you set... on to your second drink at least, Dan? No, I'm still on my my <laughs> big old jug of rum drink. Um, they have basically set the vehicle that is standard on fire, and then <laughs> driven it a hundred miles an hour across a cliff. And I I know that we don't really understand miles. We're we're Canucks, but. It's fast. <laughs> Hope apparently doesn't like that joke because she understands Miles. I didn't um, think it was as funny, no. That was pretty funny. So I want, talk good. A, I want to talk about another legendary creature. This one. Suck ups. Once for, once for Brian, but I'm going to do this one. It's Phyleth World Sculptor. Yeah. For red, They're green. So good. For a legendary creature, elemental, 5-5. Five, five. When Phyleth World Sculptor ETBs, you create a 0-1 green plant creature token for each basic land you control. It has landfall whenever a land ETBs under your control. Put four plus one plus one counters on target plant you control. This is the only landfall deck that I have, and it is stupid. This deck is so much fun. It does so many weird things. And, like, just having a, like, a different version of Avenger of Zendikar that people just write off like oh yeah it's okay like i've done so much damage with plant tokens it's it's nuts this card is so cool i i think since you since you brought up that one uh you built this deck but i'm gonna talk about the commander is <laughs> or the skyclave hierophant which Brian is two uh, two in orzov i love clerics when i first started really playing like magic following the sets and everything like that clerics were a huge part of it and i had this like to me personally like having a cleric deck where i was able to ta- tap one crate uh, one creature and prevent like 20 damage was absolutely amazing and being able to do that again <laughs> in, in sky in aura like yes i love it i can gain life i can prevent the damage i can be annoying and that you can't hurt me well what does aura do so Aura, two and Orzov, uh, core cleric, lifelink, the three three. And whenever a cleric, uh, whenever Aura, Skyclave, Herophant, or another cleric you control dies, return target cleric card with uh yeah, like I'm I'm like on an angle here. She sells she sells by the seashore. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh so return a uh, target cleric card with lesser converted mana cost from your graveyard to the battlefield. And what kind of deck is this, Brian? It is a cleric deck of I was gonna say obviously, but yeah, like cleric tribal is the best way to run this. It's an aristocrat style deck. Yep. Word for the exactly. night, aristocrat. <laughs> yes, aristocrat. Oh, wow. <laughs> um, this is great this was great too because this was another card that we were guaranteed to get if you bought a box like in yes. uh you know they went back this to is how this is the way that i foil. like it yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah they went back to doing the cool thing and we talked about this on our episode was that it's just new art for a card in the set we aren't doing the whole like uh this card is only obtainable from buying a box no this card you can get but this art but you can still get it in the set. And that's what I, I really hope Wizards continues to do. No, you don't go you back to the buy, You could buy a, a box and get a full art foil version of him. I prefer yes. that method. I, I, I hope we, 
I hope we give stick back to box, doing this. Ooh. Give me a box topper that looks different than the card inside the box, but make the card inside the box as well. Uh, the, the, give me the... I want No, I want to buy a box that is in the set, but I want a box topper that is something wild. Mm-hmm. Ergo, the Expeditions. Yeah. Yep. Oh, oh, yeah, I forgot about that. That they were the Expedition Silly Goodlands. That was also... Were they in this? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This, yeah, this... Keep falling down. I didn't even get any of these, I'll be honest. I do I do want to say, what? one of the things, um, talking about the alternate one. arts, the, uh, for Christmas, I got, what was it, Hope? The collector gift pack or whatever? Uh, yeah, the, uh, gift edition fat pack. Explain what it is. Um, so it's a normal fat pack, but you get all foil basic lands. You get an alternate art uh, card in foil. The box is foil, and you get a bunch of normal boosters, but a normal draft booster, but you also get a collector booster. Definitely a very uh, valuable. And it's only $15 more than a normal fat pack. I don't know why I'm trying to sell it to you, but like it's only $15 more than a normal fat pack, but a collector booster is $35. So it's like you kind of get a collector booster for like $15. It yeah. Just, it's, it just makes sense. It's wicked. But the alternate <laughs> art that it comes with is Fat Daddy. It's oh, it Charx. is Fat Daddy. Yeah, Charx the Raging Isle. And it's, first off, it's a way better artwork. Fat Daddy. But it's also mm-hmm. two blue blue for a zero seventeen because that needed to be a thing. <laughs> Uh, spells your opponent's cast that target Fat Daddy cost two more to cast, yep. and then for three he gets plus X minus X until end of turn where X is the number of islands you control, which wow. can just get out of control. Like I, I love this card. I love Fat Daddy. He's cool. He is cool. We yes. we didn't even talk about Hope's demise, the one that has a host <laughs> name in it. Mm-hmm. Is it a demon? Yep. Yo, it that's so a, my vibe. I like. I so it's a that. demon cleric. Of course it is. Yeah. Ryan's too but, hype like, on clerics to be honest. No, no, but every time every time I see this, I was like, I was like, oh, poor hope, like Tabrax is out for just I know. I know. I literally like uh, like I that's the only reason I even give this card like the time of day. I'm like, I just yeah. Because it has your name in it? Yeah. <laughs> a very when, when your name is a word. I was right? uh super judgmental when we were covering spoilers on this set because I felt Tazri sucked. That's just my. You suck. That's just my straight out opinion. I didn't like it. I didn't like the party mechanic. I was like, this is bunk. Party on Wayne. And then Zach made a party deck, and it's I thought fun. it was really, really cool. It's pretty fun. And it Zach Zach's brewing single handedly convinced me that party wasn't a trash garbage mechanic for trash people. Zach, I'm right there with you. I also made a party deck, not for me, but I did for work, and I'm just like, party is fun. Party on. I think it's just fun. So Zach, you can explain Zach what party said. is because you you changed my mind. Before he gets into that, I think that Zach has made you change your mind on a few things now. Nope, still straight. (laughs) Uh, (laughs) Oh, but we're working on it, baby. Yeah, I bought this new hat, and I'm growing this, like, facial hair. I thought Brian would be like, what's up? I I think you're looking extra cute, honey. (laughs) All right, Zach, what is party? So party, it's going to affect you know, different things, but basically it's looking to see what creature types you have between, what's it, wizard, cleric, rogue, rogue warrior, warrior. That's it. And wizard. Oh, no, I said wizard already. <laughs> wizard. And wizard. <laughs> wizard twice. And also clerics. Wizard, warrior, and cleric, wizards. Rogue. Okay. <laughs> Okay. It's just so, so basically, <laughs> yeah. So basically, it's checking to see if you have those creature types on the battlefield under your control, and then it gives you some kind of benefit, whether it be reducing this, you know, the cost of the spell or adding to it in some way. Um, so that's that's all party is. It's just checking to see if you have a party. Yeah, just a cool group. Let's have a party. I do think that you're going to see a lot of these party <laughs> cards with a big old spike in the D&D set coming out. Heck Obviously, they're yes. going to be, like, classing, and as Zach has said, multi-classing, yada, yada, yada. This was, I like, this wait. was dipping the toe into the D&D set. That's what that was. Yes. I love me some D&D. Daniel loves mm-hmm. some Forgotten Realms. Y'all are, y'all nerds are going to go off. I Depending on the cards mm-hmm. printed, I might, I might go too hard. Yeah. I'm nerds. I- if yeah. they don't print dr- drist, I'm I will riot. Freaking I will nerds! Seattle, banging on me, me and Ryan were talking about it. If they if they print some Elminster stuff, buddy, you've got my money. You've sold me. Hell yes! Uh, Can I direct I, uh, deposit my paycheck to Wizards of the Wizards of the Coast? I'll open I up a distributor a, account. I want <laughs> lithids. I want beholders. I want turtles. Uh, I want dark sure. elves too. Bring me that yes. sweet sweet Golgari elves. You mean drows? Yeah, yes. dark elves, same thing. Oh, I can keep on They're gonna name them drow elves. Caddy Bree. Yep. Um, 
so, whole lot okay. of really, really good equipments. Yeah. Also, also, before Lance. we go on, before we go on, before we go on, they have so much opportunity to print another cycle of really cool gods. And people really like yeah. the gods. And I called it for Kaldheim in our Kaldheim spoiler episode when they said that that's what they were going to be uh, printing. This was months ago when they did the release schedule. I said they're making another cycle of gods because people love it. And they made Norse the flip gods. gods yeah. yeah. The oh art of God. gods. Norse gods, Norse gods were needed. If they right. make the, the, the drogue god, yep. I will lose my mind. Oh, yeah. If they make like, you know, they're going to like, there's such a good opportunity to yeah. make. If you, if you don't know the Forgotten Realms thing, just go down a real rabbit hole of spending hundreds of hours reading because it's a big yeah. series. Buy the first dress book and you'll be lost forever. Yep. If so, help me God. If they, if they make a salt, mm. Oh man, I will lose my everything. You'll like I, oh, I love dark. Uh, I love death nights and salt is the death night. Yeah. There, like I said, there's so much potential in that set. If that set lets me down, I don't know. <laughs> I was I, I was gonna, I was gonna say guys, some things I shouldn't say. So you, you guys, with like progress. the last few minutes, have proved to me that you're more nerds than I am. Yeah, yeah up your D and D game, Brian. Yeah, start reading books, Brian. Yep, Brian. Get yeah. book learning, uh, Brian. Be a bigger nerd, Brian. Oh, uh, here we go. He's he just gonna podcast. We're anti bullying, <laughs> Brian, for not being enough of a nerd. <laughs> <laughs> uh, ha! He only plays D and D twice a week. <laughs> and yet. I play it once every six weeks and then not. Which is still more than you guys. <laughs> Me ever. Wanna, Me playing two. Know, I don't have time in my life hair. for D&D. &D. Don't even at me. Yeah, you if do. you want to no, borrow my Audible, Brian, you can start reading about Salt. I got two books that I think you would love. How do you get sponsored by Audible? Yeah, yeah Audible. Yeah, Audible oh, sponsored. Come on, Audible. Amazon. <laughs> I would freak out. I, I would Audible. get an Audible subscription just to pay to hear drunk Brian read books. <laughs> it's worth every penny. I would, I would buy it for sure. Plus Audible. So, there's another Zedekar Rising card I want to talk about. What? This card's amazing. Valica Exploration. Oh. Mm -hmm. Exploration. Oh, that was a good one. Two colors and a red for an enchantment, and has landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, exile the top card of your library, and you can play it for as long as it remains exiled. And the beginning of your end step. If there are cards exiled, put them in your graveyard, and it deals that much damage to each opponent. And this one had awesome alt art. Oh, yeah, all, art all of it. All of them were awesome. Let's awesome. just be real. Honestly, a commander that I've always thought was really interesting, but I don't know if there's enough support for it yet, is the Verizal. I really, really want to see a Verizal deck. If someone has like a cool Verizal deck in mind, where it's all about kicked spells and copied, I would really like to see it. I need one. Oh, well, send me the list. I want to see it. <laughs> I just I thought it's really cool. Skyclave Apparition is also amazing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, one of my I, favorites that we still haven't touched on also is Con Con. Which one? Uh, Confounding Con Conundrum. Con oh, yeah. Don't, yeah. don't, don't say weird words, Hope. <laughs> don't come in with that negativity. <laughs> that's, that's the only way that I could remember it. I was like, Con Con. <laughs> um, but it's so good. It's a two drop. It's a one and a blue for an enchantment. It's when it enters the battlefield, draw a card. Love that. And when a land enters the battlefield under an opponent's control, if that player had another land enter, they return a land to their hand. It's a really good way so to you might upset get, me. You might get your landfall triggers <laughs> off, but you're going to do it anyways, but you're certainly not ramping. Yeah. Uh, I was also super excited for Grackma, but that's because I'm an animal with Tam. That's true. Grackma is yes. just a really cool card. It is one black green for a zero zero. He enters with three one one counters on him. When another creature you control dies, if it had a 1-1 counter on it, put a 1-1 counter on Grakma. Super cool. And when Grakma dies, create an XX black and green Hydra, where X is the number of 1-1 counters on Grakma. How I'm many more times can you say Grakma? Grakma. 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 I should call my Grakma. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'm going to call it this one, Daniel, um, because this is, uh, you bought a print of it. I don't believe we've oh, talked about it. Oh, it's your son! I love the yeah. artwork of Tango Floral Hedron, both sides. Also, Kazanu Nectropod, super cool artwork. Kazanu Nectropod is my favorite art in the whole set. He's got a little butt. You got you like big booty insects? He's got a big butt and he can't Honestly, lie. Honestly, both of them are really cool looking. Also, I'm just looking at that Whirlpool Island, very cool. Oh, Everyone oh my card is amazing. And the like green looking swamp. That reminds mm -hmm. me of a Golgari swamp. Mm -hmm. Yeah, honestly, this set was full of cool cards. I always loved the full art cards. Everyone likes to bling their deck out with the nice full arts. Like, you can't play an Omnoth deck with just normal basic lands. They have to be full art. 
I got attacked. Or they take mm-hmm. your deck away. I got attacked at work. Um, they were talking, uh, a couple customers and one of my coworkers were talking about uh, how if you're playing a commander deck, you should have all at least matching lands. And I was just no like, way. I'm like, here's the thing that I do. I'm like, I've got a full art. I've got a full art from Zendikar. I've got a full art from Our Devastation. I've got basic lands from every set under the sun and none of them match and half of them are super super heavily played and i just grab a stack of lands and pray to god yeah all matching lands i don't know i know a lot of people like it i couldn't do it i have too many lands to try that out that's what i'm saying i literally am currently out of forests i know we're always out of forests and islands Uh, i got you i got you hook us up yeah i got you hook us up baby Dan, Dan, uh, our hope here um, hooked me up with like multiple foil full art lands. Mm-hmm. Gotcha, I can't believe neither Brian nor Hope has talked about fill of our retreat. Yeah, that's a pretty cool card. Yeah, kitties. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty yeah, sweet. It's cats. We feel, both love cats. I feel like we could. I feel like we could probably keep Meow. talking about this set a little Meow. bit more now that we've like so really got to experience it with other cards. But do we? Uh, do we want to move to legend? No, we're not even going to do legends. To be Here's honest, the thing with legends. Okay. okay. We have lots to talk about with Legends, but we also just talked about it. Yeah, we just did Legends. You guys I, you guys get what's going on. We'll, I mean, let's we've You got know some... what? I'll get I'll let everyone choose three cards from Legends. Great. You'll let I was us. Say, I... Yeah, I, I stopped I the recording. Like, I have the power thank here. Thank you, Master. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you. I have the power here. I can mute you all. Do it, I dare you. Uh, Dan I don't Jones even... three cards from Commander Legends. <laughs> um yeah, let's let's get into Commander Legends, I guess, it. with the last quick thing. Um, I have my favorites right off the top of my head. Go. All right. Yeah. Jessica, <laughs> Kamal. Yeah, what do they do? That's it. That's it? Just Jessica and Kamal? Jessica and Kamal. I like the flavor. I'm into it. Next. Go. Zach, okay. do you we'll have some, do. some favorite things? Oh, wait. Before we even get there. Strongest card from Zendikar Rising. Go. Ryan I'm said Agadim's. Agadim's Awakening. I think all wrong. of the pathways. Yo, for me, flat Person. out, Green Warden. Yeah. Yeah, I agree Pers- with that. Forsaken Monument, maybe? Ooh, and Lithoform Engine. Mm, Lithform, Lithform Engine is probably one of the better cards actually printed. I will change mine to no matter how much I like Land Harmonicon, Lithform Engine. Oh my god, why are you so obsessed with me? Stop copying me. (laughs) You all are entitled to your opinions, but know that they're wrong. It's it's okay (laughs) for you to like need that kind of validation, Ryan, but like you're also definitely wrong. (laughs) Feed the swarm, am I right, Zach? It might be my feed the swarm. Feed the swarm. Feed the swarm. It's Best fun. card. Best card. Top, 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 All right. Top, top, top. Now we're into it. Brian, give so, okay. me give me your Commander Legends. Uh, before I even say my Commander Legends, the uh, to me personally, um, after playing with Commander Legends for, what, a month now? Something like that. Sure. Give or take, yeah. So, so yeah. Op Agent, Hull Breacher, format changing. Like, all your group hug decks are going to have to run removal because obviously you don't want to just sit there and let someone get all of these treasures and you can't even draw a single card. Flat yeah, out. I'm looking at you, Ryan. <laughs> flat out wrong, like I was talking about earlier today. Opposition Agent and Hull Breacher should not be in every deck. They're not new staples. Should no, be no, new staples. Well, they are, they are yeah. new, but I don't think I would classify them as staples. But I'm saying they are format changing in that if you know that someone's running those colors, you're going to have to think about how you play things. So, like, a group hug deck is going to have to have that removal to remove a hull breacher to enable the draw <laughs> for people, right? Nope. That again, again, if you're no, playing, okay. if you're playing, no. no, one second, Brian. If you're playing no, hull no, breacher, no, 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 one second. If you're playing no, hull breacher into a group hug deck, you are not playing at the right power level. Oh, no, 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 no. no. I'm saying, well, yes. Okay. I will agree with you at that point. Unless you're playing Angus McKenzie. Yeah. My my personal, I, I was that. happy about um, is that there was a lot of really awesome reprints with like um, oh the white enchantment removal names blanking return to dust yeah that one uh, I was about to say the Kodama the East Tree oh, oh Kodama's uh, dope that's a very huge, good card amazing amazing card um I'm gonna say my second one. Is just because it's a lord, um, the bio waste ooze, mm. um, bringing ooze an actual lord Sick. and making it a potential real tribal deck that you're able to play. Slurk. Um, did somebody two... say slurk? <laughs> I did. Yeah, I did. That's that's the actual or your commander for that deck for sure. Hell yeah, buddy. Uh, 
Uh, yeah, well, yeah, it's a ooze tribal, yeah. Well, um, I mean, you don't have a, a ooze lord otherwise. Unless and I guess I'm just looking Anifar. through this, uh, like, like kind of scrolling through these cards. I'd have to say, like, three for for mine would have to be just the the reprint of a lot of these cards, like... You like the Vampire reprints more? Tutor. Yeah, like, Vampiric, having Vampiric Tutor and Mana Drain come out as another reprint to make it more available to myself is amazing. Um, there's just way too many cards. Um, way too many cards. Zach? All right, I know I'm going to do everyone in the Abzan tribe a disservice by not saying Kalfenor because this card I honestly think is just my favorite card printed this year. And that's Sakashima of a Thousand Faces. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That oh, card that does enable crazy stuff. Yeah, I, as much as I love Brash Tonner and Fiery Emancipation, Sakashima of a Thousand Faces, like, I, I've put it in so many decks. I've traded for so many versions of this card. I'm sorry, so many, like, copies of this card because it just, it does what I love doing. I get clones. I get to remove the legend rule, which means I can do more clones of more stupid stuff. I have Grixis Goblins, this Grixis Goblin deck that at any given time, I could have six Vile Smashers on the field. True. Seems cool. So I get yes, it. I'm not, I'm not even going to name other cards because just Sakashima. You just cases. like Sakashima that Sakashima much? Sakashima is ridiculous. Like, mm-hmm. okay, so at our RLGLs, we do a Commander League. And then mm-hmm. at the end of the league season, we do like a, like a hockey style draft. Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, uh, I'll take Sakashima. And Helm of the Host. Yep. And everyone's <laughs> just going to be cool with this? Sick. Like, I, cool. I mean, I could keep naming other cards, but honestly, like... Why? Why? Because Sakashima... Be- is all of them. <laughs> like, <laughs> this so. is our deck. Yes. Uh, yeah. Sakashima, 100%. Uh, Ryan. Well, Sakashima was on my list. Mm-hmm. Um, but thank you, Zach, for mentioning it. But my <laughs> first will be Arkelos. <laughs> of <Miss> course <laughs> thick turtle is pretty dope I, I love the card it is it, it's crazy um i also love tevesh zot doom of fools um having played this card it is absurd oh his like, his built-in protection is so cool yeah if if your opponents cannot answer him and, and i play i've got a deck built with him and sakashima is the general and i've played several games with it and generally Tavesh comes down, protects himself, and I just throw, draw three cards for the rest of the game until I take everybody's commanders. That is so generally brutal. I, generally, I use Sakashima and copy him. Woo. So that I'm, I'm doing it twice, and then which one are you going to... Like, I'll make two tokens to pulse it up, and then I'll just keep drawing cards. The Planeswalker's so nice, you make it twice. It is so good. And then my third card is aptly named Three Visits. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Three Visits was I'm, a really good reprint. I'm yeah. kind of a ramp, ramp fanatic, and having a two, another two mana ramp spell is. Toit? And, it, you know, it's a probably about a $2 card now versus a $180 card. Mm-hmm. Especially that it calls out Forest. Yep. Specifically. Yep. That's so good. Oh, yeah. Um, Another one of my favorites that I forgot to mention. Sorry, there's three. Um, Obviously, Band Dragon. Oh, Amareth. <laughs> Amareth, yeah. yeah. Duh, duh. Love it. You want to you talk about Bad Dragon? We have a sweet, sweet episode about Bad Dragon. Check it out. She listen to it. We do have a sweet, sweet set of it. Uh, my favorites are, I don't know, strange ones. I really, really like Blade Griff Prototype. I think that that was one of the yeah. coolest yeah, political tools, and that's what Commander really should be about, is making those, all right, you'll take the three damage, but what do you want to get rid of? It doesn't affect you poorly. I, I just love that card. It, it can slot into any deck as an interesting form of removal especially for colors that don't have it, like a black deck that until Feed the Swarm couldn't deal with an enchantment. I really, really thought that those were good. Uh, I honestly liked all of the Court Cycle. I'm not even going to name oh, any, any of them. Yep, they're all cool. Any of them? Um, For me... Quarter Bounty. Yeah, for me, Jen was just like such a cool card. Like, I really, really like how that commander plays. I really like the whole sacrificing enchantments and bringing them back, especially with the Sagas. I just thought that that was like such a very, very fun. And I wasn't as excited about it on release until I built it. I built it in Tiny Leaders, and it is just a blast. It's so fun to play. I cannot say. I think you're like the complete opposite to me because I like, like, I, like playing Gen as an like actual commander, and I'm like, meh. 
Like maybe tiny leaders might be a lot more fun. I have to take a look at your deck list. Or oh, it's, like that, but... it is a blast. It's so, so it fun. Cool. And then flat out, honestly, I really like commander's plate. I really think it's a cool card. Mm -hmm. I love things that let you equip your commander. Like uh, I really, really like uh, black blade reforged as another example. Yeah. But just the built-in protection from the things in not your commander identity, 3-3, three, three. it's just a really cool one. And then I'm breaking my own rule because Rograk is the greatest. Yeah, I think that <laughs> everybody knows that. Yeah. Uh, Best I did want to. I did want to mention one more card. Um, Break the rule with me, for, Zach. Not for commander's sake, but another, like like I said, since I've been in quarantine, I've like gotten back into playing popper and building popper decks. Fall from Favor <laughs> is so powerful in Popper. Um, if you don't know, it's Tuna Blue, Enchantment Aura, Enchant Creature. When Fall from Favor enters the battlefield, tap Enchanted Creature and you become the Monarch. Enchanted Creature does not untap during its controller's untapped step unless that player is the Monarch. This removal is super good. Even in Commander, this is still amazing because you deal with a creature and then you're the Monarch. Like, 1v1, like I said, Popper, this is very, very powerful. But even just elsewhere this is a new card and it being at common it just i was super excited about it the more i've been getting into other formats and just like browsing things it's made me like really relook at some of these cards so this was another one that i'm super into yeah did okay. did any of us actually mention keeper of the accord like breaking the oh the keep, pie? Keep, keeper of the accord i do actually think is one of my another favorite ones there's so many that's the that's the problem with trying to choose yeah. just three but again we just went over yeah. commander legends there's so much from it uh, I do want to say one thing. I have not talked with anyone here about this, but I believe it's a universal thought. The foils, the etch foils, are the best foiling process they've oh, ever done. 100%. I 100%. hate foils. Mm -hmm. And I love etch foils. Oh. If that is the only way that they did foiling from now on, I would be over the ding-dang moon. I hope that that's how they like go. First off, the etched foils. Frame. With, yeah, the frame is great. <sighs> The look of it is great. All of the ones that they reprinted are great. I thought it was weird that they didn't do well, one of each of the patterns. What is it, Hope? It also, the fact, the fact different that it doesn't color pringle. Yeah. yeah, but they, yeah. The, etched, the etched foils have been just a godsend in what they bring look-wise. Pictures don't do them justice. That's the no. only thing and stuff. Like, they're, they're really, really good. They're beautiful. Yeah, they don't look great in pictures, but just... Every one of them, the uncommon commanders to like the mythics, like Thrasios and Timna, are <laughs> yep. just beautiful cards. The Sakashima one, beautiful. Like they are just wonderful looking cards. I yep. hope that they continue it going forward because I have not seen better looking foiling ever. There's no foiling process in Magic that is ever compared to it. It's and to, to compound onto that, the secondary market, the edge foils are typically much cheaper than like a normal foil version mm -hmm. or close to the normal price of the card itself because how the collector boosters were bought yeah. and how they were supplied. Like, well, it's not even that. Commander I, players are just animals. Well, we cracked so much. But, well, in, it, in addition to the quantity, it was just that there you were guaranteed so many, so the market mm -hmm. got super flooded. Right. And, uh, like, it just never... Like, it didn't become an issue. Yet. 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 We yet. could get, we could get what, three a pack, was it? Or four? Uh, three. I thought we were guaranteed three. 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 Uh, no, Which, well, no, no, up to three because you might also get an okay. extended plans order. Mm -hmm. So I, I just love that. Like, I agree. And it's just another thing that's been good for the secondary market. While Wizards says they don't acknowledge the secondary market, there it seems like there's yeah. been a lot of moves where recently I feel like it's been easier to obtain cards. Yeah, listen, the, the cheaper the game is to play, the more people can play it. That's just a fact yeah. of life. 100%. They've done it, and, you know, they've done a good job with Granite, COVID has made things more complicated to get our hands on stuff like Jumpstart and Commander Legends was kind of scary at first, but like with how they've done Commander Legends, being able to get whatever we want, basically the commander, the new way that they're doing like the small commander decks, like that is amazing. I have so many, like I can just go out and buy a deck if I want to just play with new people or play with a new play group that mm -hmm. I'm unsure of power level wise. I can literally spend $30, get a deck and sleeves, sleeve it up and go play with people. Yeah. Like that's I want that to continue on. Like I just love that. All right, but yeah, that's we wanted to go. I guess strongest, but I guess we didn't really do that. We kind of just did the year in a review. Like as far as cards go, um, let us know. Is there some really great cards that you saw? We definitely didn't touch on many commons and uncommons because um, there's just so much. This lot. was this was yeah. a lot of product. A lot of people were talking product fatigue. 
I actually liked it. You didn't have to buy every set. Like I said, I, I put zero into Double Masters. I don't even think I bought a pack of Double Masters. That's not true. I bought so, the box topper. That stuff. doesn't count. <laughs> but I didn't buy any so, packs. Like I just. So, Dan, and well, really the rest of you guys, uh, the question I have for you, this year was, Gavin Verhey has said this year was supposed to be the year of the Commander. How do you guys feel? Do you feel like this was the year of the Commander? Do you feel like we were really treated how we were supposed to be and oh, we yeah. were really like, represented? like every set was a gift. I felt mm -hmm. like every set was like a love letter to Commander players. They're just like, we get it. Here you go, guys. And I'm like, thanks, y'all. It's, it's very cool to see a not their format get so much of their attention because it's just so popular because commander is just kind of the universal when you say you play magic ever there's one nice universal set of rules it's not is this modern is it historic it's just you know this is a commander deck i'm gonna sit down and play it I, I think a lot of people can just really get into that you know just come together play with your buddies there's so many different power levels and different ways to play the game but yeah yep. i just i would i would say and i'm not i don't generally complain too much about sets um my only kind of complaint about this year is I honestly think it's too much. And I, I'm, happy that, I'm happy that we got everything. Uh, I mean, I could not be happier, but I think it, it just seemed like I would buy a box or two boxes and then pick up the singles, and then I'm like, oh, crap, there's another set. And then mm -hmm. I would buy my, and, and, oh, there's another set. Oh, there's another it's it, it just didn't stop. I think my only complaint on top of yours was the fact that the wizard's distribution i know there's a pandemic i understand that they that that, that were were the virus and I mean, it, all it these things and everything yeah. Coronavirus. yeah exactly but the fact that mr noodles get shipped worldwide uh, I, would I'll assume, say I would assume that cards would be able to be shipped a so lot I, easier than Mr. Noodles or other. I feel like they're not a priority. Needed. Well, that's exactly. the, the, the difference with Mr. Noodles is there's a lot of Mr. Noodles pack in plants, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. there is not a lot of like magic. Doesn't really have a lot of places there's the like cards come from. Two or three places. Yeah. So if it one, from, you know, if one person all gets the cards are printed from Cardamundi. Yeah, you know, like one person gets COVID, it shuts the whole factory down, and then it's kind of like a boohoo. Our cards aren't on time thing. Although, yeah, I guess although, so. I, I, although, I'm the dick here. No, no, no. Although I will say, <laughs> well, yeah. Although I will say, what they did with the ship times on the secret layers is borderline criminal. Um. Although I will also say, as a side note, um, the extra life one isn't supposed to come until like late February, and mm -hmm. mine's already shipped. So I'm like, they're kind of they're getting back to normal. Yeah, they might be getting back to normal. But I bought the summer secret drop, and I got it in like the end of October. It snowed. Yeah, I got like so my fall super drop. Brian, not to go too far down the rabbit hole with the COVID thing, but I work in the automobile industry um, and supply chains. So when you think like your cards don't arrive in time, so they not only they have to get paper and ink and packaging material and plastic all to the factory. And the factories that produce them have to get all their raw materials to produce them to send to the factory. Yep. Then you have to deal with the shipping to the factory, and then the factory has to print it. And then that factory has to ship it and it has to. Oh, buddy, you're. I, I understand supply so, chain. I no, no, understand. I, no, supply no, I understand. Chain. But, but so you, you get one single hiccup in that supply chain, and it could it could slow production production down by six weeks. Yeah. So I, oh, I really and truly sounds do like they think they got to get their thumb I, out of there. I really and truly do think that they did a pretty good job, all things considered, with all, everything uh, going on. Nah. Yeah, I'm you're wrong. I, I drunk I'm Brian is wrong. I, I no, this this is partially drunk Brian. No, this is drunk Brian. But I, I would I would flat out say that I think that this was a good year for commander players in general. Like yes, especially yeah, it, especially that. how bad it could have been with the lack of the gathering part. I think that we all got a lot. I think that uh, especially with the invention of spell table and the online community coming together, I do think it overall was really, really positive. Like, I'll find uh, out, this was my year that I got back in, and I couldn't have been happier. It's, like, so exciting to be back. Yeah. I definitely think I definitely think this year was the year of Commander. I feel like we were yeah. treated pretty well. My So, at first, I was really feeling product fatigue and was, like, really upset because I was like, man, I want to buy everything, and I should be able to buy everything, but I can't afford it. And, honestly, that just taught me how to 
just be patient. Budget. Like, well, not even budget, just be patient in general. Like, do I really need to get a box of double masters? I literally had six friends open boxes and give me like, these boxes back here. I didn't open these. They gave me all their leftovers. I literally had friends just get the mythics and give me everything else. Sounds like, like I need friends like you, Zach. You got you got a friend. bit of brown there, Zach. But what I'm what I'm saying is is like yes, um, <laughs> I wish I could have bought stuff at the very beginning. But how prices adjusted and how easy it was to get these cards on the secondary market and how much cheaper they became, it definitely taught me that even though we are getting so much product so frequently, it doesn't necessarily mean that like I need to get them now because I mean it's true. <laughs> All my stuff became so much cheaper. Like I could buy everything that I wanted for less than a box from a set that I wanted. Yeah, the the price the price um, definitely dropped on a lot of cards. Yeah, um, but guys, they came we, out. we could definitely go on for hours, but we're we're gonna wrap this one. We've been really going for a while. Yeah. So uh, thank you so much, everyone, for listening. Hope where can uh, we find our stuff? Uh, you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, uh, Twitter, slow down. Uh, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter. Uh, Not that slow. Uh, check out our streams guys. YouTube our streams every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time 5 p.m. 6 p.m. Mountain Standard Time uh, we also post our podcast every Sunday if you're listening to it you probably already know that um, we also have our Patreon if you look if you'd like to support us that way um, we also have some sweet sweet merch if you want to check that out um, so anyways guys thank you for tuning in reach out to us and let us know what your favorite cards from the last year was and uh, we look forward to hearing from you bye Little. See ya.